to his worship. Young man, you have not been long in his service, or you would know that I am Master's will. I have spurned, sir. His worship shall know that you are here. Say, is your mistress at home? She's gone with the waiting woman to the country fair. True, it is the country fair. And has your mistress, is your mistress? Mm, you know what? Never mind, you may go. My master will be with your honor directly. Now, what could the alderman want from you? I was amazed to hear of his wedding. Not cloth merchant of Cheapside turns forty, and away he goes for a jaunt in Surrey and returns home married, if you please, married, without so much as by a leave to his attorney. I vow no good can come of this. She has a pretty face, doubtless, but no money from all I hear. That. Bad. Money should marry money. It's the law of life. She's young, they say. Forty should marry sixteen, to my thinking. I pray for all his young girls. <laughs> <coughs> Wish you a good morning. Ah, it is you, Master Quill. Pray be seated. I trust your worship is on well. My health could not be better, Master Quill. No doubt you have heard of my marriage. The news had reached me but yesterday, so I am one of the first to wish you joy. I thank you, Master Bill. I thank you. Now, you will guess that I wish to make a settlement of all my brides. I shall be happy to receive the worship of the man. Such a man as you, Master Groats, I do not counsel prudence. I wish to settle upon my wife and growth the whole of the property I now possess. The whole of your property? But, my good sir, that is a will and not a marriage gift. It is my will. Nay, you need not try to dissuade me. I know my mind, Master Will. <coughs> then it appears she's not deaf. Her hearing is good enough. Nay, she's, it is better than yours or mine. This morning, I had no sooner remarked there was a fine day, and about the country fair, that she took the purse from my hand and ran with the waiting woman to the country fair. And this is the woman to whom it will make away a fortune. <coughs> I love her, Master Bill, and I wish to give her proof of my trust. I am amazed by such rations. Wait, Master Bill, I have another reason for this marriage gift, and one that you may think more prudent. Indeed, I hope so. Let me be sure we are not over I hear it rumored, Master Quill, that a new tax is shortly to be imposed upon the heads of families according to their means. Is not that sheer robbery of breadwinners and thrifty citizens like myself? None of us like taxation, Master Groves, and yet we must endure it. I settle all I possess upon my wife, who will be dumb to the treacherous questionings. As for myself, I am as good as penniless. Let them tax me as they please. Now, what do you say to my plan? You have missed your calling, Master Groat. Should have been a lawyer and not some cloth merchant. But what if your wife should prove a benefit? My goods are good, are good, are what women chiefly run to buy. In my warehouse are silks and ribbons, enough to cover all the dumb ladies in this town. If my wife should spend too freely, the money will come back to my own comfort. Nay, I foresee that you may even grow rich again, thanks to this wonderful provision you are making for her. Yes, I will draw the seat of settlement as you wish. <coughs> Very good, Master Will. Now, let us speak as friends. It is true, a dumb wife must be a poor company to a man of spirit like yourself, Master Grove. <coughs> yes, I long to hear of her happiness from her own lips, and I know her dumbness stands between us. Now I shall take my leave, for I will be unable to pay my respect to Mistress Anne. No, Master Will, pray do not leave. <coughs> she may return at any moment. I hear her steps already. She is here, Master Will, she is here. Let me but open the door. Ah, Master Grove. I said you are a new human. 
better husband. <laughs> I 
faculty in her own chamber? No, she shakes her head. She wishes to remain my brain and where is the hall of Spider-Man group? The clothes merchant who seeks our aid? Ah, let me open myself to this great doctor.
Shorty, not Master Alman. The word of the teacher must be in peace and privacy. What is the 
digital setup of win, you are a great lawyer, you must be able to get out of the game. Japan, your husband wishes to enjoy you very handsomely. Ah, oh, my dear gentleman, John, let me hug you again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Only the king must win. Then I, only an orphan, until he married me, and now one of the greatest ladies of tea players. But I see this is my will, I must not disturb you. And thank you, Mr. Sand. Other matters are more depressing. That is true. Then there's the furnishing of this house, which I must undertake afresh from the beginning. Our linen, our plates, our underwear, all carried. Yes, my love. I must confess it, even before a guest. The scarce thing I can use in our house does not need to bear. These very cushions on which you are seated must be returned for it. I will disturb you, but a woman must quit. Do you not see how the letter has finished? Get not feeling. <coughs> this is the effect of the city air, eh? because too many fires are burned during the winter time. And they all know. How great enemies smoke and damp are of pleasure. You tell me, us sun seeds fit for all of its household. You look at the cable, cable, cable cloth, it's like an empire you want to attract. And look at the crazy food food first. Only little thing must quill. How important is your wife's hand after a bachelor's marriage? It is also plain. Mr. Sam, it seems to have. Private matters to discuss with your husband. Perhaps my business can wait another day. No, Master Quinn, do not leave me. For mercy's sake, do not leave me now. Master Quinn shall stay. Then he will be able to judge for himself. I have ordered a dish of lamb sweet bread. Because I know you will have a fry. My bed. Why did you look at me? What? Is something wrong, my darling? Shall I answer or no? Perhaps 